this is to no like insult, but like none of you guys would be like my friends outside of this. Me and you both cycle. Why not? We couldn't. No, we would cycle together. Oh, Logan's hurt. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I don't know. No, but like, you're like my brother. Like, I think of you like that versus like, oh, no, he's going to cross. <laughs> What's going on, George? I hurt my back, dude. And this is how I know I'm getting old. I hurt my back taking a nap. <laughs> I slept the wrong way, and my freaking dog barked, and I jilted. <laughs> yeah, I'm it, sticking to it. Yeah, jilted. I jilted up, and and my shit, like I I felt like a little tight, like a little tight thing in my back, and it was like. And I was like, oh, there it is. Yep. <laughs> and for days, bro, I, and it was a joke at first. I was like, ha ha. I went to the place that you got your little wrist fixed. Yeah. And they, they did everything they can. They performed every surgery possible. How many surgeries? At least one. <laughs> That's a it, lot. It was a mental surgery. They said I was a pussy and it still didn't come through. I'm just hurting right now. It's okay. I can see. It looks like you're hurting more emotionally, but... Because it's, it's getting, interrupting neither. my freaking life. Sure, man. Hey, welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. Woo. If you aren't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button for me. We got two podcasts a week. We, uh, we really appreciate you guys listening. We got Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursdays are guest-based. We have a phenomenal guest today. Cannot wait to bring her on. Massive guest. Yeah. I yeah. don't want to say massive guest. That seems... Is that... Like, not size-wise. Yeah, like you'd be uh, expecting... Ma- magnitude. Like- Ma- well, well, significance, yes. significance, yeah. is 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 massive. Someone with an inside look at all of the happenings that exist within the 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 environment that is Team Maverick and the household that exists around it. Yeah, I mean, this is this is something that the crowd has been asking for for a long, long time. Shout out to the Los Angeles Dodgers for winning the fucking World Series, dude. Like, can, oh, we, can we get some yep. lights? That, that happened uh, la- yeah, last you, night. You know, I know. I live in North Hollywood. Sometimes you can walk toward the street and it's beautiful. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, I need to get the fuck out of here. I'm hearing gunshots. Like, boom, boom, boom. Oh, is that yeah. what the fireworks yeah. were last night? Yes. Oh. Welcome to Earth. Buddy. Oh, what do you mean, Earth? I mean, dude, I don't want to shit on baseball, but. Don't do it. Don't. Uh, no, I'm, I, it's a great sport. <laughs> no, you can't. American can. pass. I'm not gonna. No, I'm not because I'm not gonna. I'm really not going to. I just maybe I'm maybe I'm not as cultured as I thought I was. Fuck, there's like I should have known that. Come on, dude. Come on, that's our city. Come LA, on, LA, Logan. LA, LA Dodgers. LA oh, Lakers. Congratulations. Back to back sports victories. Big year for Fantastic. Los Angeles. Great, great time to be here. And as I've said, California, what a fucking state. Am I right? It's boys? yeah, yeah. Except we pay a lot of taxes. A lot of taxes. Let's bring on our guest. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> uh, our guest today is one of the hardest working people that I know. She's worked alongside me for the past three years and is the glue. Behind this organization, here to talk about how much she hates her job and what it's like working with a YouTubing, boxing, Pokemon collector. It's my assistant, Danny Strobel. Yes. We, we really need an MVP chat. We, we need an Welcome. MVP chat. Like, like a chant? Like this. MVP. MVP. What did you say? I wore my fancy pants today. I know. I know. You look great, Danny. You look Thanks. great. It's, it's, I, I like when you, uh, you dress up or you wear. Wow. How's it, how's it sound? It's it's weird sitting there, huh? Yeah. So just some background. Danny runs the note taking and a lot of the boards for this podcast. She's watched. How do I turn my down? Oh, <laughs> a lot of yeah, people Mike, in the shut up. <laughs> just like, I ask the same that thing. in everyday life. Like, can I please turn Mike down anyway? It's a, and it's a great yeah. question. Oh, there we go. Two two hundred and what? Thir- thirty. Thirty almost. episodes. You've been here since yeah, episode the, one. The beginning. Yeah. Every the time, beginning. every time you see the lights change color, that's Danny. Yeah. For a while, every time you saw the. Shot switch. That was Danny. Oh, because you you yeah. ran, you were the engineer as well. Yep. This is what I'm saying, Danny. Yeah. Your skills are eclectic. There's nothing you can't do, and I think you have a lot of insight on a just being like a hardworking human. Because I have no doubt in my mind you're going to be successful no matter what you do. I, w- I wish you could work with me forever, and I'm going to try to convince you to do that. Are you firing yeah, her? We'll see. Uh, <laughs> right now. <laughs> no, she, I just like I got to I got to keep Danny uh, stimulated. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure we're going to dive into this conversation and this always happens with, uh, when I have people that I work with on this podcast, Mm -hmm. um, like when we had Hayden on, it's a bit therapeutic in a way. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to say some things in this podcast that we can both leave with to, uh, continue and further develop this, this working relationship. How are you? I'm good. I realize I like set up my drinks here beforehand. For (laughs) you. But for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Because normally you do it for the guests. Right. So what's it, what's it like sitting there and not 
behind it the computer. Feels a little like I am lacking a little bit of control. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Here's the good news. You know that we're not here. You know, it's just a conversation. We know yeah. each other um, and have for a while now. Uh, three years? I think four, actually. We've been working together. We've known each other for what? Known each other for four years. Okay. Working together for two and a half. It's interesting what the inception of this relationship was. Yeah. It just got taken away from us. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Uh, how do we even say this? I don't know. Okay. You, you go for it. You go for it. Back in like 2017, I woke up one day and I was like, I need a school bus and I bought one That's for $9,000 and it was in New York and I didn't know how to get it to LA cause it was uh, an older school bus like 1970, 1980. And I, and I, I was like, dad who lived in Ohio, I was like, can you grab this school bus? It's a 2005. Yeah. In, oh, 2005. Yeah. Oh, I, Lied. I, I'm sorry. Decades just, off. Yeah. My this bad. is gonna. That's gonna happen a lot in this episode. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Danny, Danny's a stickler for uh, for exactness. It's just she has her off. name on her own phone. Yeah. <laughs> like, hi, like just in case she's like, oh, that's mine. That's, that's my name. And that's, <laughs> and that's one of her biggest. And that's one of her biggest strengths. Her attention to detail. Like it's, we, it's we, fantastic. We need her. We need her. I've I've said it oftentimes. She's the glue that holds the Maverick house together. Yeah. 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 Just so, if it wasn't so far off, I wouldn't have corrected it. But please continue. No, I'm glad you did. Okay. It's not a retro bus, but it is an old bus, and I only trusted my father to drive it from new york to california he posted on his instagram he's an adventure man he's like hey if anyone wants to join me on this ride feel free to do so and like five people he picked up along the way and you were one of them yeah you like, were one of the people that like, decided like, to get in the bus <laughs> with greg paul and travel across the country i call i called my mom and my no i actually didn't tell my dad i called her and i was like hey there's this guy that just posted on Instagram. Like, I, I know of his son. He does these YouTube videos. So, like, I feel like he can't do anything bad because he's in the public light. You so, spoke like, a little too soon, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not heard of this thing called Me Too that's been going around and everybody in the industry? No, it, no, wasn't, no, in, like, it yeah. wasn't in a creepy way. No, I know, it, but, like... It was just a random person on a random bus. Like, it was very weird that's yeah. why i didn't tell my dad i literally was in la and my dad called me and was like what are you doing where are you at <laughs> and how did you get there <laughs> and how did you get there yeah, yeah. and i was like ah, here's the story but he was he was mad that i didn't tell him of course danny yeah. well, i gotta ask why'd you get on the fucking bus then? i needed i i hannah montana tickets <laughs> that, was my, that was my first concert Hannah Montana Joseph Was it I, did, Is that how you got the tickets No <laughs> Have you guys not heard of that shit Like you don't go into A stranger's fucking van yeah. Was it Because it, it was a bus no, You're here, like it's here's different what it is. Here's what it is I I love adventure And I love doing new things Just like you said mm. Stimulation I, I get I get tired of doing the same thing over and over again. So I was in college. Yep. I uh, had been there for three years. Three years is like, whew, it's a lot. Yep. And uh, it was actually two weeks before nationals for triathlon, which was crazy because my coaches were like, what are you doing? This is like a big training weekend. And yep. I was like, I got to get out of here. I got to go do something else. And I saw it online and I was like, this is it. This man LA. driving this 2005 bus yeah, across the country. I swear the there's nothing even it. more. <laughs> it, do, do you, are you the kind of person that likes – I, I, I – you said you like change, but are you weird? Would you consider yourself a kind of a, a weird person? Yeah, but like what? In, a, in a great that? way. Yeah, no, I in a great not, way. Yeah, I'm, like I'm, like a little bit different. Like you you like to do things that aren't exactly linear in life. Like yeah. you like to take risks. Oh fuck yeah, she takes risks. I'm worried about GP, and I know him. <laughs> <laughs> you got into a van when he was a stranger. <laughs> He's actually. I will say this. Welcoming? Uh, no, yeah, his first impressions are often fantastic. Right. Yeah, but dude, well, you're on a called, trip. That's hours. Call, we had calls on the phone like twice before. Like, so it wasn't just like super random. He like vetted me and I kind of vetted him. What, was it, what did he say yeah. that, that calmed you enough to get onto this strange <laughs> school bus with him? Oh, I, what did he say to you, Danny? I don't what think was I his, remember, like, actually. I don't like I, I was it memorable? I, I uh, DM'd him and was just like, Are you passing through Colorado? Right. And he goes, Hell yeah, Colorado. I love Colorado. Oh, because that's where you were. Yeah. Because you went to college at Colorado CSU. State University. Yeah. Fantastic. And that's Collins. and that's Best okay, okay. And every time we go to Colorado, she goes, Yeah. Yeah, you you I'm gonna meet up well, with some of my friends. You yeah. So I love when we go to Colorado because selfishly, but you like Boulder and it doesn't make any sense to me. Actually it does make sense because you are you and I am me. Yeah. And Fort Collins is better than Boulder. Ooh. Is that there's like a rivalry or a... It's not even about the rivalry. I don't I don't really care about that. It's more just like fact, oh. truth. Okay. Okay, got it. So he passed through Colorado, he yeah. picked you up, and then he dropped you off on Vine Street, which is where I was, in the bus. Yeah. And um I was on a pretty gruesome like regiment there. In the morning I'd wake up 
and I'd work out. It was the first thing, you know, 7, 8 a.m. And I remember the first night that you guys stayed over. Again, there's like five of you that my dad brought. <laughs> I went to go work out, and you were the only one that came with me. Yeah. I was highly impressed. I needed a workout in. <laughs> yeah, because you skipped your triathlon yeah. workout. That's another thing Danny's not uh, not telling you. Maybe you guys don't know about. You're an athlete. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw you do a backflip. Yeah. I was stunned. <laughs> what? qualify yourself just so they know what kind of type of specimen we're dealing with here. okay <laughs> so I grew up uh, doing gymnastics I did a bunch of other sports but gymnastics was like my main thing that mm, I did mm. um, and then that brought me to high school and in high school I joined the track team and started pole vaulting which kind of goes hand in hand with gymnastics I think that's why I was good at it okay um, so I did that through high school I actually have my high school pole vaulting record so doesn't your brother also hold, yeah. hold the pole vaulting record for male? Yeah. The so Strobels just cleaned Strobels. up. Just crushing <laughs> no it. Strobels. <laughs> it's, it's, my family is very competitive and like very into sports and winning things. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a downfall, I'll be honest, because we would show up to like family reunions or like work events and they're like, shit, the Strobels are here. Because oh. we're all, we just... I feel like it's like a like a Adam Sandler movie where they come out in the van. The all O'Doyles, dressed. the, the O'Doyles. O'Doyles, yeah, yeah. yeah. O'Doyle rules. So, Had their so own yeah, flag. High was, uh, Throw a banana in front of you while you're driving down the street, and you drive your car off the cliff. All right, whatever. Adam Sandler reference there, guys. <laughs> so in high school, was pole vaulting. Pole vaulted through high school. Got a uh, scholarship actually to go pole vault at a college in uh, in Indiana, and I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to stay in Indiana. So I forewent that. Went yeah. to Colorado joined the triathlon team and then was a triathlete rock climber backpacker it's interesting how life kind of uh life kind of like had it I don't know life kind of just swept you up and did did what it did with you like because you were on the the path of maybe let's call it like a traditional traditional life right conventional conventional um, yeah. yeah only I would say no only because Ever since I was a kid, there was no job. Like, I was never headed towards corporate America. I was mm. never, never headed towards that. I hated high school, was not good in high school. Graduated school early at 16 to just, like, go adventure somewhere, to go do something. And so... How'd you, it, gra- how'd you graduate early? Um, I just took extra classes. Okay. It wasn't specifically, like, a grade thing. I did fine. I got, like, mostly Bs. Yep. Um, but I took extra classes one summer so I could graduate early. And then I went and did a backpacking trip for three months. Look, this is... This oh, is, no. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I'm afraid to play it because I was so annoying. You look so different. Yeah, what? I don't want to talk about it. But look. No, Neither, let's talk about her. No, none of those Danny's right there. there. Oh, <laughs> my God, dude. <laughs> there I am. Just arrived to LA. How to, funny is that? To hang out with this YouTuber. I was hanging out dad. the window of the, the bus. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Are it, those the rest of the Goonies that they're showing? Like, who? These are the other That's kids Kyle, that decided... That's Ashley, and something. They were all so cool and normal. It honestly was... Uh, it was stunning. It, it was just down for adventure. This video should be used as an anti-kidnapping, like, <laughs> like commercial. Like Possibly. like these five children got on a bus with a strange middle-aged man and ended up on Melrose, Wait, Los Angeles. Well, Where did okay, they go? Well, none Wait, of them were, none, none of them were are underage. You, are you ready for the craziest part that's just like truth behind the scenes? Yeah. Is Greg actually knew the twins from a previous friend of a friend. Oh. Kyle was a friend of the twins. I was the only random one. Hey. God, Everyone dang. else was like... And you're the only one that's stuck. Think about that. They so, all went back. so interesting. Well, because my dad, for the longest time, was he's like, yo, that Danny girl, she works really hard. Like, you should you should maybe talk about bringing her on the team. And I'm like, okay, like, we got we got our uh, assistant position filled currently. Who with was a- it? That- you know, I think it was Ayla. You know, so many plates uh, that she cleaned up. So many. Yeah. And then Lydia, just more plates. Yeah. Uh, and we had a couple, not like issues, I'd say, but like maybe like hiccups. And there comes a time where, you know, both people just just graduate. I was ready to to go to the next level, and I needed a bit more uh, like professionalism. Nothing against them. We, I just wasn't running a professional yeah, organization. Like, bro, I'd break plates, and it's like, hey, that's that's the assistant job. Now it's like I, the, the your scope of work is unlimited. You, yeah. You're a podcast engineer. You're taking notes. Uh, you're helping me organize things, produce shoots. All, it's it's like hard to producer. describe what my job is. I think that's – it's almost frustrating. What do you do? Yeah. I'm like – so many hats. I yeah. wear so many. I don't know, and it's just such a wide scope of work, which is cool. It keeps it keeps me entertained. I'd say it's like house manager mixed with producer. Yeah, mm-hmm. I but describe it: production coordinator, 
house manager, travel coordinator, he, Logan's assistant. You're an exec. You're an exec assistant. You're an exec yeah. assistant. Yeah. So when I, I and I remember when I first met you, the the time that you were being vetted to be brought on was a what was a time of turmoil, absolute fucking turmoil within the organization. When right? was it? Was it, it was. It was just. Wasn't it just post Tokyo? Uh, yeah. No. It, you know what's crazy is we met up once pre Tokyo. Right. In December, I drove you to a script reading or something. I came by the okay. house, and then after that, I came in like January, February. Mike was there. Was at a studio. Yeah, at a music studi studio. That, I remember it with yeah. Jit and, with Jit and Quan. Yep. I remember it very, very clearly, and 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 as I said, it was during a time of infighting, restructuring. Yeah, you clearly, I'm sure, remember how much fucking turmoil was within the organization. Well, with you with specifically, me specifically, because I remember when I when I started here in April of that year, Mike was writ on the the no go list, right? Which was so crazy because you were there originally when I like met with. Logan and the team the first time so it was just funny then two months later to see you integrated back in and I remember you're standing up on the balcony and you're just like hey by the way if you ever need anything you can come to me people regard me as like someone that they can like come to if they need anything and literally in my head I was like he said yeah. the same you, thing except for he said come on and I was like what the fuck and you and you made that that funny face but now you learned yeah. over the past three years that I am that person. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You come to me for for any yeah. problem you have. If there's an issue with a a, a a coworker, a colleague, anything that I'll handle it with you. And yeah. you've been absolutely fucking incredible. But what what was it like? You you were um, there for that trajectory from the pits of hell back to where we are now. What is what was it? What has it been like being on that roller coaster ride that some of us have been on for the past couple of years? <laughs> It's an interesting take from the inside because I feel like it's much more like uh, a small, smaller magnifying glass on it. Like you're focusing on these little things that eventually build you into like the bigger picture that we are today. Mm. That's a bigger, better production all around. You've grown. We've all grown. But yeah. at the time, we're just working on little projects. And so I don't think I even looking back, I don't even think I see it or saw it as it being messier or harder than it is now is just like. It's hard. It, it, it does. Yeah. What you're saying is this. Yep. When you plant the apple seed, it's hard to visualize the tree. Right. It's hard to imagine that this tiny little seed, Sadhguru said this, mm -hmm. will grow into a tree. If you told me, if I showed you this and said, this will be that outside. See that 10 foot tall blossoming beautiful tree with fruit on it? You have to be crazy to believe me, especially <laughs> if you haven't seen it happen yet, right? Yeah. And we were in, I totally get what you're saying. Focusing on a lot of uh, we were doing best friends right around then too, yep. right? It was a lot of experimentation. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what, that's why we we were in like what you said. It was just like let, let's throw shit at the wall mm -hmm. and, and see what sticks. And and we found some stuff and uh, we learned a lot about each other. And I wanted to ask you. And I'm afraid to know the answer to this question. <laughs> uh, what what has what are some of the hardest tasks that you've had to do here, or the most frustrating, difficult, like? I hate this job. I'm going to rip my hair out type things that I've asked you to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she pulls out a list. She's like, okay. Well, no, I, I oh, wrote shit. a couple yeah. things down just to try to like think about it. And the funny thing about me and the way my brain works is that I'll be so frustrated in the moment or I'll call my parents or I'll, I'll drive home and mm. I'll just be so frustrated. But like once that day passes, it's gone. And I'll, I'll think about it. Maybe I'll mull over it for like, if it's something big, maybe for the next like week or whatever. Mm. But then if my mood and my, endorphins are have changed then i've changed mm. so the things that come to mind are uh the the jet ski era made me want to die oh, it was that bad it was oh, i do remember that. i <laughs> do have, i wanted to you turn anything? you into a jet ski and then ram you into the side of the pool they were they were too small they were too big they were leaking they oil work. they didn't work how many jet skis did we go I through and seven of and, them and it, and people see the end result they see the video of us with the jet ski in the pool but yeah. what they don't see is the interaction that exists between you and the person coming to sell it then the thing doesn't start you have yeah. to tell them to put it back on the trailer move it out we're not paying for it actually right. you're paying us for wasting our fucking time yeah there's that that's, whole thing and i think that is actually the through line for what what does frustrate me the most is a, a simple ask via logan of find me a jet ski simple right not <laughs> and so it just takes me and it, it just goes through so much and in 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 my position i'm like they think it's it's just so easy to find a jet ski it's not yeah and so it's like the other thing i thought of was uh i love travel and i love travel coordinating 
but the most frustrating oh, thing is like fights. being home <laughs> and one of like you or someone just being like hey we're changing this we're moving this around and oh. if the time change it's 2 a.m it's it's 11 p.m it's i wake up to four texts on my phone and you guys are just like oh we missed our flight which i don't i think that's only only happened once in like a visa or whatever mm. that situation was it's it's when it when everything shifts and change changes and it all has to happen very quickly and yeah. then something else comes in it i'm like that is such a such a uh, unique an important skill to have for someone in your position yeah being able to call an audible and activate yeah. quickly Adapt. yeah is, and i think i can activate and i can do it you're you can. of course, I just of course don't Danny. want to yeah, yeah. you're you're, inc you're, yeah. you're incredible and honestly like through the years one of the God, i can't even look at them <laughs> i'll just uh, yeah let's, what? let's see what happens here we got some hull damage. This whole thing is a disaster. A uh, disaster. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the things you've always done, and we talked about, you know, calling upon me in times of your need, is like, you you'll be like, Mike, why why does he do this? Mm -hmm. like, like, because because here's the thing. Every, once again, everyone sees the execution; they see the end result. Yeah. But but you don't realize how simple of a notion it starts with when it comes from Logan. Danny, I want to build a couch in the floor. Make it happen. And yeah. and and mm -hmm. you're sitting there, and she and she comes to me. She she'll come to me, and she'll say, "Mike, Logan wants to dig a hole in his perfect hardwood floor that makes up twenty percent of the value of this fucking eight million dollar house." She'll come to me, and she'll say, "What what are we gonna do?" And I'm like, "I can talk to him, but I assure you, no matter what I say to him, he's gonna want a certain things. I know he wants to dig the fucking hole." Yeah. And so now she has to go act on a task that is essentially destroying property you have someone is going to come in destroy the floor with a jackhammer in the middle of the morning every day and and, and blow a hole in the floor essentially and she's got to go make it happen even though she knows she shouldn't fucking do yeah, it i think something that i learned from the very beginning and i actually learned this in pa work working as a production assistant on set mm. is don't get in the thought process of asking why and i don't know if you've noticed it from me but i've just recently I've been asking why a little bit just cause I'm like having fun being curious. But previously I just wouldn't ask why I yeah. would just do it because the moment my brain goes into why and starts to legitimize or try to put logic to it, it'll ruin the whole thing. It's just do it. Don't ask questions. And I, you, it used to, it used to frustrate me a little bit, not with you, but mm -hmm. when I'd have this idea and someone would uh, question it in a way where it was immediately negated. Right. Right. But with you, especially now you've been here for so long and I really do value your opinion, I like, I like talking through my uh, decisions. Yeah. It's, it's good to say them out loud and get a second opinion. And it's part of the reason, like, I think it's safe to say our whole team has gotten extremely mm -hmm. candid with just like being open and talking through pretty yeah. much every decision that we make. Yeah. I mean, we debrief over every single podcast. Yep. So like, yeah, I mean, but th th that's the tricky part. Uh, art sometimes doesn't come with logic. So <laughs> when you're trying to create art, people are trying to like understand your thought process and you can't it's because if you did, then you would create the art. Yep. That makes sense. Totally it makes sense. And totally he, always sense. Pull, he always pulls, that's the problem. When, he when, always pulls it off. When you guys were, uh, <laughs> when you guys were talking about like, so I'm always just like, fuck, I'm, like, dude, right. I'm sitting here. I told the kid not to do this. 50 million views, like 20 million views. I'm like, all right, I get it now. So then I stop asking why. And so when people come in with the jackhammer to ruin the house, yeah. I'm like, all right, he's got a plan. He's like, he's got to fucking do it. Dude. Just you know? go go somewhere else. That yeah. one worked out because it's cement it's great and it's still pit. more comfortable than the fucking couch you bought. Yeah. God, that couch. God, that couch. We'll get cushions in it. No, it's coming. It's. I think, yeah. I is, just, is that I just, is that frustrating? I, I get really frustrated at things such as half the house doesn't have hot water right now. We haven't for awesome. a long time. For six months Yeah. at this point. And I've dealt with I didn't know that. six, seven <laughs> different fuck? contractors. My, I know my, because my I don't wings. tell you because his wing, his wing's great. He's so I don't bother him with it. Danny, he knows. He knows that no, he every knows. day I walk out of my oh, room. Six I, months? No, it's been since the beginning of I, quarantine. I thought you liked that shower. <laughs> I, mean, I prefer to use the shower in my room, but I mean, like it's nice back there. It's yeah. a big bathroom, but. I've dealt with six or seven different contractors. The, uh the gas company, the air duct people, the whatever. And every time someone comes, they say they fix it. It works for a day. It doesn't It doesn't work the next day. We've yeah. already bought a new unit. I don't want to spend any more of your money. Thanks. And so right now we're trying Thanks. to uh, 
do a, like a small claims court against the company. Who You're sold lying. This one, yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, we don't even know about this stuff. She just yeah, I, uh, <laughs> she puts a lean on your house. Like, yeah, we had to sell it. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> she, she, she just quietly runs the show and does a great job of it. What um, how when you describe uh what you do beyond beyond you know producer or house manager or executive assistant when you describe the place that you work how do you how do you describe the Maverick House to people? <laughs> I love when you guys. Ask questions. You're like nervous about it. Oh, I, 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 I'm just very curious. <laughs> I, I just don't know. It depends who I'm talking to. Also, I very much um, like prep my conversation with people depending on who gotta, they you are. Gotta like, you gotta know your audience. Yeah, I gotta yeah. know my read, audience. Read the with room. It. Um, so if they already know that like I work for Logan, like what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'll just be like, it's a, it's a, it's six boys living together. It's like a, I'm I'm living in a house full of like 15 year olds who have a lot of money I to feel spend. So bad for you. I feel so <laughs> bad for you. And it's really crazy do. because <laughs> I I'm I'm down to be a mom in the future. Like I think that's in my path, but like but that's they can't be rich. Well, <laughs> they're rich. <laughs> Fuck rich. It. Going no, back I inside think, me. <laughs> I think one of my most like the the most frustrating thing at my heart of hearts is when I'm sitting here and I'm like I I'm dreading being a mom because I feel like I've been a mother to you guys for the past three years. And yeah. it's like all, I'm like, I need to go live a 23 year old's life. But you know? I wanted but to talk about that. Yeah. But can I say something? And this is for good reasons that no, you're not six, nine. Six <laughs> uh, you, you should have comfort in your heart to know that when you hold that child and you look that child in the eyes, you'll, you'll remember one thing that's different. You will actually fucking love that child. <laughs> you don't love us. So when we do stupid shit, you're just like, I don't she, like these guys. No, 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 I love you guys. I do. I really do. I think that we're, it's a different thing than like, like me and David will like, he's here all the time. I'm here all the time. You, everyone's here all the time. But yep. like, you guys are friends and I would consider you guys like it's different. Like you guys aren't like my boys and we're not like friends. We're not hanging out. So like my personal life is very much intertwined with a group of people who are like I care for and I love and like you guys are like brothers to me almost, but it's not like my friends, Yeah, you know? So I it's like that tension between like my life versus work life. Mm. And it works for you guys because you guys are all, living your life. It at works work. a lot of the time. I mean, it's, it's, it's wild living with being with being friends with mm -hmm. all, you know, all those things with, with people like this. I yeah. mean, this is a cra it's a crazy world that you exist in and you're, and I also think that your relationship is different with, you know, with each one of us. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. I just think of like outside of this and this is to know like insult, but like none of you guys would be like my friends outside of this. Me and you both cycle. Why not? We couldn't. No, we would cycle together. Oh, Logan's hurt. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I don't know. No, but like, you're like my brother. Like, I think of you like that versus like, oh, no, he's going to cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, I, I really I'm, I'm, don't I'm being mean facetious. that. Like, I, no, I, I, I get like, what you're saying. Like, you're not going horseback I, riding with me. I get what you're, you're saying. Going... I, get what, I totally get what you're saying. In, yeah. in a work environment, our relationship, or in my eyes anyways, is like ace. It's almost, yeah. it's almost, it's almost perfect. But outside of work... We just have different interests. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. And also, I commend you for being comfortable and having the... I can't, I can't say balls. Having the courage. Yeah, I, I think having the can. courage. No I, I, no, I can't. No, here's the thing about that. Having We've the talked courage. about this. Balls are sensitive. I know. She, yeah, you can't say... You, balls are sensitive. Having the balls to do this doesn't make sense. The balls are sensitive. Dude. Right. You Vaginas know? take up. But but I, what, it, what is the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said it too. It's but fun. but what is the mean? What is the makeup behind having the cojones or the balls? Is is that supposed to be the region that your strength comes from in a man? Apparently, I mean, like what it's is, where your testosterone is coming oh, from, which it, gives you it. like. Oh. Right, 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 I'm missing right. 15. I still feel pretty good. You're ballsy. Yeah. You're ballsy, kid. Listen, anyway, uh, being uh, able to say that. Well, it's because I know. It's because I know that you know I care for all of you guys, and you guys care for me, and it's Danny. Like, we're just I care. I care for you immensely, but we are wild. We're wild, Danny. We're lunatics. Psychos. You are like the only like uh, you have a an amazing head on your shoulders and uh your your morals are incredible. Um your values are amazing. Your interests are incredibly peculiar peculiar <laughs> and, and unique. Um and so I wanted to ask how I know how, but I I want to hear you say it. How are you, how do you balance having a personal life and also working at a job that is incredibly demanding? You're you're here a lot. 
Yeah. You work a lot of hours. Yeah. Even when you're not working. I'm working. Yeah. I text you and I'm like, yeah, uh, I need a hundred thousand dollars in cash yeah. tomorrow morning. I'm please. like, great. Is it uh, within 10 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Nope. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. Uh, I, know. I, know. <laughs> I notice you don't respond on Sundays. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> it's I fine. It's fine. Doing that. And, and like, by the I'm way, like, if this doesn't need me, I'm not going to respond. It's going to be fine. I'm not going to respond. It's going to be okay. And I get it. I totally. Get I sent it. you I, that text picture the other so day. Funny. Of I, of what did it say? Like when someone from te- from work texts you on your it day goes, off. Hi. And he goes, nope. And he goes, I understand. I understand. <laughs> yeah, I, under- I get yeah, it. Yeah. Nope. Not I more today. do it as like a reminder yeah. for both of us. Yeah. But uh, yeah, how do you balance your? Per- I, I I dropped something off at your uh, apartment complex the other day, and yeah. you were with friends. I, have I friends. was like, this is amazing. Yeah. I, I can't. Sundays <laughs> are my my uh, sanctuary. Yeah. My day, because by the way, it's the only day I have off. Hey. That's it. You know. Six days um, a week. <laughs> I think, I think what I do. And what I have done is like I've put this presentation self up like of myself when I come here. And that's like I don't want to like I'm not bringing any of my like personal stuff, my frustrations, my emotions, whatever. Like I try not to at least obviously sometimes like sometimes it can come through. But that in itself also protects me from everything else that's bopping around out here right it's like my little shield where you guys have done so good by the way i appreciate appreciate you guys so much for the danny cover your ears everyone jokes about it yeah, but like course. i love it i'm like if, if i don't need to hear this conversation i'm out yeah and so that's been very helpful a lot of ear um, covering and yeah. it took and it took a, us a while to get i mean i don't know how much we want to talk about it but we had a, a a feud at the beginning of both of our employments here where I'll just say oh, it. I was, yeah. I was yeah. a big free baller. I used to roll commando all the time I, and I would not wear He's underwear. gray shorts. Oh, you remember wow. This? Remember the gray shorts era? It, I just, it's just kind of who I am. I would wear these thin shorts and Danny eventually told me, Hey man, like, you know, all the power to you for just letting your dick hang like that. But it, I don't really like this at all. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, in a lot of ways, Danny's the reason I wear underwear or at least thicker shorts. And so she's a massive, uh, a massive growth factor <laughs> for me. <laughs> Thank you for You're that. You're welcome. Thank I just want, that. I want, I want to facilitate growth. In yes. You you have, guys, you have, you know, you, you have. like how can you grow? How can we all grow? If you're I not think, wearing underwear. If you're not growing, <laughs> growing, growing underwear. Growing underwear. But, but, but that parlayed then into, um, and and he helped me with this a lot too into knowing when to say certain things in front of people and i and i i i definitely act you've at least improved how i act in front of women mm. with just a little bit more respect and a little bit more dignity because you've always told me like listen like i'm not like you guys i'm not like you guys you guys are you guys yeah. are fucked up you guys <laughs> are fucking animals dude you're a bunch of frat fucked up animals <laughs> i did like, say like, that to like, him once he got so offended i was like am i lying I, she lying? did. She said it, and and we were talking about the show and what we talk about, and <laughs> and she was like, Mike, like y- y- you guys, you know, very much. We talk about it a lot. Exist in a little bit of a bubble, and we do crazy shit. And so when she said that to me, it really made sense. And every time I was going to talk about a Danny headphones, <laughs> I can't. <You> know? <laughs> <laughs> but anytime I was going to say something, you know, crazy, I I tell her to cover it up. But um, yeah, yeah, no, I, and I think that wraps up that question, which is just. I've, I've put on a little bit of a barrier to protect myself. And then before work or after work, I mean, I'd wake up at 6 a.m. to go horseback riding to come to be able to get here before work, which eventually I got a little, you know, it goes through cycles of, of burnout of trying to separate and do enough of me stuff. I remember that. Yeah. I remember you, you'd be like, yeah, I went horseback riding this morning. I was like, yo, it's nine. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. How did you have time to do that? And uh, it's so hard because like, as a human, I do. I'm like, I, I feel bad. Like I'm, I'm taking a lot of this person's time. As someone who's running a business and absolutely just wants to accomplish as much as possible in the 24 hours I'm given, I'm like, I need this person to perform. Right. And so it's this weird balance between being a, a boss and just like, not even, not even so much a friend, just as like an empath. Yeah. Uh, do you still do your extracurricular activities before and after work? Like, do you have the energy? I, I'm currently at the moment i'll be completely honest completely and entirely burnt out of 
quite everything. I know, you I even had a lot I of trouble tell, saying Danny. what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I could. T- I could tell. I could yeah. tell. Uh, <laughs> And, and I and I want I, I I want to figure something out. I don't know what it is. Like, let's work together to find a solution. Well, and, we, we and pushed, also we pushed her back to to leaving earlier in the day because I mean I, I feel like at one point you were set like seven days. Like I was. You were yeah, I was seven for six to, months. I did ten a.m. to ten p.m. Yeah. Uh, sorry, a Monday through Sunday, so every day, and then I, it changed to Saturday. I wanted to ask 10. you this. I've always been afraid. Why did you do that? Because I never asked you. I never said like, hey, 10, 10 p.m. Did I? Yeah, well, it's on the. It's in my contract. <laughs> ten to ten. PM. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I never asked Bullshit. you. It's t- it's be on call and be at the house and like there unless like mm, told otherwise. I don't. Uh, I may have to check you on that. I don't think legally we can put it in a contract to have you work twelve hours okay. a day. Well, it's it's on call ten a.m. to ten. PM. Okay, okay, that's 100%. okay. That that makes sense. But then if I'm on call and you you've you always from the get needed me from ten a.m. to ten p.m. Yeah. So there was no okay. let back of okay. Well, if I just am home or doing my own thing because like there was a couple times in the beginning where i would like try out that but then i'd be at the wrong spot at the wrong time and you uh, needed me so okay. it's like if i'm here that's i'm here and yeah. ready to help you yeah. you know it yeah. was like unspoken you didn't ask for that but you did by needing me from 10 a.m mm, to 10 p.m mm, mm. this is this has always been a fun uh relationship for me to watch as well Coming from a corporate background and and even more so a, a person who managed uh, delegates below me, yeah. Uh, watching him come into his own as a manager, and I and we've gone through so many fucking struggles between, yeah. you know, him and you and communication and and hours and and have you have you noticed a growth in him as a as a boss and as a leader in the organization over the past couple of years? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. He's like, oh shoot. Yeah, I think he's. He's become more um, aware of like what's going on and like the impact that it has yeah. on others. But I will say it's still like a frustration would be the like if you don't need me anymore, let me know I can go yeah. kind of thing. Because what my every day for the past two and a half years, <laughs> I've texted him the exact same text every single night. What's it say? Do you know? I do. Uh, uh, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to get the verbiage. Uh, do you need anything else from me? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I texted it to him in French the other day. Switch things up a little bit. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, what's your uh, what's your fondest memory uh, as a part of Team Maverick? Was it a trip? Was it uh, something that happened to you? a gift that you were given? Like, is it like, or is that? I don't want to lead you into it, but yeah. Um, on I mean, on that note, the car was pretty awesome um i loved i like being involved in things you know yep. and so I, like the last year with the combat training being able to do that and be oh, a part of that yeah. was like when we went through there was like when we went through at night in the mud Me and at you. The, it went, oh that was like literally one of the highlights of like the past two years at least that i can like think of in the beginning and then we did the burpees at the end and we just like crushed high it. five it was like being involved like i want to be that's crazy. That was, yeah, that was a moment. It was a moment. It was a moment for me too. We she's talking about Tim Clemente's combat training course in uh, West Virginia. Yeah. yeah. In West Virginia, Logan made a video about it. We got to learn from Navy SEALs how to handle uh, their weaponry, how to you know approach combat situations, and Logan went through the course you know multiple times. That was kind of the the precipice, the cat- catalyst for us yeah. being there. But then at the end, they sent me and Danny down the course together, and it's a live fire environment where. We're handling AR-15s, yeah, live fire guns. rounds, and handguns at the same time. So you're switching from your 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 primary yeah. to your secondary weapon, running down this course at night as a team. As so a it's team, just send, protect, send, protect. Like as and yeah. and and Logan had gone through it, and the day and it started to drizzle lightly. But by the time me and you took the course on, yeah. it was a monsoon. It, it was, was the windy. trenches. There were fires burning that were adding smoke to the environment. It's crazy how that technically was work, right? That's the one thing I'll go ahead and. Pat stick yourself. my chest yeah. out and say like this job has prepared you for literally anything 100%. i I'm, I'm confident that whatever you do next you, you, it, it will be a cakewalk compared yeah. to this hellhole I mean, <laughs> I mean seriously we put this girl through every you're talking about an assistant doing a navy seal combat training yeah. course yeah that was one of those things where i was like there's a lot of things that I've planned and I've prepped and I've produced and I'm not a part of it. It besides in like the behind the scenes, but that one, when it was happening, I'm like, I will be a part of this. You're like, so this excited. is so much yeah. in my alley. And cause most of the things you guys do, I'm not 
into it as much like I'm I can produce it and I can plan it and I can do everything like that but it's like I don't really even desire to be in it because we don't our interests and creatives even aren't even the same yeah yeah the same way I can't really offer my creative opinion because you, it's not the same as your guys's you did well, great we, in the ghost sketch we did that ghost sketch oh, yeah. at the ranch. see that's another one is just like yeah, being in yeah. being involved in something like that I'm like I I will go underwater in a well I will like crawl my thr- self through the trenches of West Virginia. Yeah. yeah. But this is sitting in front of a computer and finding jet skis on Craigslist, I want to. Yeah. It's, some- <laughs> it's, it's something we've always struggled with. And I know you've struggled with it. Uh, and we've had multiple conversations about this. You are not an assistant. You aren't. You're, you're a very special girl. You're very tough. You're very, very good at what you do, whatever that is. You, you can act, you can sing, you can dance. You're an entertainer in many, many ways. Um, has it, has it been tricky for you to balance the fact that we need you to complete things for the, for the things that we're doing to get done? Like there, it would be impossible for you to take part in that course or for us to take part in that Navy SEALs course, unless you had quarterback the travel and set up everything that existed. Has it been hard for you to, to walk that line? That one was neat because I could, I could jostle both of them and I was fine playing with both because I had like the involvement on one end and it's just like what I mentioned before which was a lot of the things I just had to realize I'm like this isn't stuff that I would it doesn't align with like who I am so doing this type of stuff wouldn't uh accelerate me as Danny it would Mm. accelerate me as like Logan's assistant you know and that's not and I'm I love it like I've, I've been for the past two and a half years like I feel like I've crushed the role as an assistant mm. and that's I love to work hard and like dive headfirst into something like that but I've understood that it's not like my playing field in that area you know I can go and ride my horses I can go travel I can go create in my own way well I don't really have time to <laughs> you I want to give you time yeah. I want to give you time yeah. I want Danny I'm we gonna gotta be find someone else to help yeah, and, and like get... play around with yeah, it because yeah. it's not about I don't think it's about me being like yo peace out you know because I I think that I'm an integral part of of this system oh God, sure, and yeah. making the system as strong as it is but I think those they're just it, it could be so exciting for someone new that's the two and a half year old uh, go me yeah. to come in and have this experience yeah. you know to experience what it's like to be in this world and get that and allow me to experience experience sure, something else. Sure, sure, because you're there. I and and one one area in particular that I I I've been like kind of intrigued by it because I wanted to see you you know explore is just like uh your your relationship outside of work mm. with a counterpart. I'm talking about your dating life, Dan. Oh, <laughs> like, oh God, what? here we go. <laughs> I'm talking about your dating life, Dan. This is one. Th- I'm I'm literally thinking. I was like, Yo, when does this girl have time to like go on dates? Don't. You don't. There was that sucks. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Good job, yeah. Logan. I'm here's sorry. the thing too. For here's what's here's lonely what's, woman. <laughs> here's what's been okay about it, right? So I dated in high school a good amount. Like I feel like I always had a boyfriend in high school. After that, I was with this motto of of I got to figure out myself. I got to make myself a whole piece before I bring something else into that because the way I make decisions in my life are very heart-based. They're very like what I'm feeling in the moment. Do I get on a bus? Do I, mm. you know, move out to LA for 2 months and rent an Airbnb? Do I work in production in Ohio for a little while? Like yep. these are all decisions that I very much have made on a whim and my heart felt it very heavy and I made the choice. And so if there was another piece in there that was giving me any type of input or thought, i.e. a boyfriend or a significant other, I didn't know if I could make those decisions soundly following my heart if I had someone else weighing in because I'm so much of a giver and an empath and a, mm. I want to do what, I want to do what someone else is, sorry, I will inconvenience myself eight times out of 10 to make someone else happy. It's mm. a very big flaw yeah. of mine that I've realized in the last year. It's probably why you're a great it's assistant. It's a strength in a lot <laughs> yeah. of ways, yeah. but in terms of personal growth and yeah. personal success in the ways of, of this world, it's put me at a little bit of a disadvantage mm. because I will, I'm not willing to sacrifice someone else's happiness or someone else's whatever to then like climb the ladder of success. Mm. And so it's, it's, I'm learning about myself in the past year. That's it's great self-awareness. It's good. Yeah. That, it's good that you know that. 
You're also. But, you're all, you like yeah, how we just kind of moved away from the boyfriend? No, 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 we haven't. No, we haven't. Okay, I no, we saw haven't. that, but I saw that, but I, I, she, she strangely went back to something on the topic before it that I wanted yeah. to touch on quickly. And okay. Then yeah, yeah. Please, well, let's I'll get. I'll talk on it more. Yeah. Yeah, and the boyfriend stuff. I think what you're wrestling with is something that a lot of people, uh, especially in America, wrestle with, which is um, this this uh, idea that you're spending your life building someone else's dream. Mm. And and there are some people who are completely okay with the idea of being a part of an organization, working for a greater good, that eventually ends in uh, success for mm. the, the, the boss of that organization. Um, do you feel that pulling at you sometimes? Do you feel like you want to be creating for yourself? Do you feel like you should be creating for yourself? And is that a factor? Um, my my easy answer is yes. Um, I want to make sure to define like creating. Like I just want to live a lot of words. You got this, Danny. <laughs> um, there are times where I feel like I want to live my life. I want to live the existence that is my life. And in this world specifically, it is very much Logan's life, mm -hmm. which is not a problem. This is your life, you know, and that's awesome that you've created this. Um, but it does give the feeling to at least me at times where I'm like, okay, is this my life I'm living or is this my life as a supporting role in someone else's life? Mm. Yep, absolutely. And that's fine. Some people, like you said, they, they love that. And I think that I, I am right in the middle where I'm okay with it because I can kind of do my own thing and, and have those experiences like, uh, Tim's or I can learn different things throughout it, but there definitely is a big hole in, in, well, what has Danny done? Who is Danny outside of, Logan's assistant. Yeah. yeah. You know? And we've, I, we've talked. Yeah, go ahead. I think you do a good job of uh, maybe at least getting closer to pinpointing the answer to that question mm -hmm. and more importantly, sticking to the answer to that question. Yeah. Because I'll tell you right now, and Mike, you can attest, there's so many people who have uh, gone in and out of this world, who have worked with me for me um, in whatever capacity, who get <clears throat> this, uh, <laughs> this, this, this syndrome. This, we talk about this, this. belief this that, that they can do it. Do create, yeah, yeah be you know, creator, like, yeah. And that, like, and all, all, like technically, all I'm doing is like what I pick up a camera, right, and then yeah. edit a video, and then put, and just post it online. No, but if and, you truly and, understand, it's a massive thing. It takes a specific person to curate a specific audience. Well, it's that, just like, like what I've. It's what I've done my whole yeah. life. It's what I love to do, yeah. and it's tough because something that may appear so like fun and easy. Mm -hmm reaps these incredible benefits right so a lot of people are like oh i can do that yeah and then they forget what their original goal was or their what their what their life's path was <laughs> yeah to go pursue this dream that a isn't theirs and then b if you're not following a dream that isn't yours nine times out of ten is probably not gonna, gonna end gonna the way work. you want yeah. i think the the craziest thing for me has been that even since i was a kid i went back and i was like i called my mom it was like a couple months ago i go what did i what did I like run around the yeah. house as, as yeah. a kid? Like, what did I want to do? Yeah, yeah. And she's like, travel. You wanted to, you as a kid, <laughs> you wanted, you literally at 13, 10, 9, whatever, uh, for my 13th birthday, I planned a whole trip to New York for myself. And I was like, mom, we're going. Here's, I booked everything. Yep. I got the approval from my dad to like have him pay for it. Younger than that, at like nine, I, I planned a whole trip. I created this whole world for myself and my mom. My parents were getting a divorce. And my mom had mentioned to me that she wanted to move to the Dominican Republic. Me as a nine-year-old, I was like, we're moving to the Dominican <gasps> Republic. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, you know? I planned the whole thing. I planned it out. I found us at, a house. At nine? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is, I, planned, this I is, found us a house. This I is notable. Us. This is notable. Like, yeah. this, is, this is remarkable. And then it was like, she, I was like, well, when are we going to go? She's like, we could go. My mom just wasn't at the time paying attention to the fact that I really believed that this was something that was going to happen. Yeah. And uh, it was like a couple weeks out from the day that she said we were going to go. And I was like, here we go. I mean, I didn't book anything at the time, yeah. but I was like, I was all excited. She's like, no, we're not actually going. And I was like, oh no. At the time, I just wanted to see and experience. And have like, you been there yet? Have all, not the Dominican, no. I've been to Haiti, which is right there. Same area, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's it's just so after talking to her, she's like, it's travel. It's it's for a time I I grew up watching Disney and I wanted to be an actor mm. and I wanted to do this, but like it's a uh, it's as I'm getting older is this maladaptive ten maladaptive tendency that I've created that is just to be seen, just to be heard, just to be like, and I want to create and I don't think that's maladaptive. I think that's 
me wanting to express my imagination. I'm a daydreamer. I'm an imaginative. I'm running around with dragons at least yeah. 50% of the day. Yeah. But that want to be seen part is that middle child, the person who was the outcast in school, who's like never fit in, wore hoodies, you know, it was yeah. like, who am I? And what can I offer to the world that makes me a powerful person outside of someone else's counterpart? Can I ask be seen in what way? <laughs> Guys, look at this water bottle. How cool, right? <laughs> I thought it was vodka from Alex, from Alex <laughs> Jones at first. Left no, it's just, you know, you got to find cool things to make life interesting. Um, okay, answer that question. Yeah, just like, you know, yeah. uh, what are you trying maybe to do? Maybe you could Danny? specify, like, what, what's yeah. be seen, no, be seen in, in what way? Um, I th- it's be seen for, like, who who Danny is, you know, and it's a, it's a thing that I can't ask someone else to see me if I haven't fully seen myself or if like, I can't expect someone to fully understand me. No one fully understands anyone. Like I don't fully understand check, any check of you this guys. Out. Check us out. I saw this quote the other day. The Japanese say you have three faces. The first face you show to the world. The second face you show to your close friends and your family. The third face you never show anyone. Hmm. It is the truest reflection of who you are. Yeah. yeah. And it is like, uh, it, it's so true. There's like a side of me that only I will see. Mm. No, not, like no one will ever, ever see that side. And it's crazy to think that. Yeah. But I, I guess I'm asking, are you trying to be seen in a very significant way with, by one person? Are you trying to be seen uh, in a movie in, theater? In a movie, right. Well, that's, what, that's what I always thought growing up is like, is like, I want to be seen. I want to be in movies. I want to do this. Got but it. I love to create and I love to, I just started taking, you know, it was a couple months ago. I shouldn't say just started taking, but I took an acting class over the weekends and it was so fun just to like create and be expressive because yep. I feel like here, I part of that barrier is like, I'm not the expressive person person you ask my friends or like people back home or people in college I'm like the silliest weirdest loudest most talkative person you Mm. know and here I try to be quiet I try to do what I'm supposed to do I try to not like be a little too outside the box to not get in the way of oh my gosh this is a great is that Danny riding a (laughs) unicycle nope (laughs) (laughs) I thought I thought for sure you're gonna no that's the one thing I can't do look the real Kyle Sue that's the other kid on the bus Oh, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Danny, one, one thing I would say to you, and I think you're already doing it, and it's hard for me to say it to you because your job is more demanding than my job is or was. That's a good one. You have to, when, when you're in a situation where you're trying to walk the line between, this is Danny cycling right here down a large hill. <laughs> It's Topanga. When, when you're trying to, I, we've talked about this before in the past too, when you're trying to walk the line between working a job building someone else's organization and also exploring who you are and creating mm. a, a, a reflection of yourself for the world to see. Yeah. It unfortunately just takes a ton of midnight oil. Like you really just yeah. like, like I, I talk about this a lot when I was more a part of team Maverick and was officially employed by team Maverick. It was business meetings. It was Logan. This, it was vlogs that it was boxing. This, it was podcast that 12 a.m. The night shift sign gets set up. You yeah. remember, and I would and I would try to gather oh, who I could, yeah. but no, no matter I what, I would I would sit and I would shoot the night shift at, at 12 a.m. and I would edit until three or four, and I would put up yeah. the first episode of the night shift, for whatever I could pull together in the time that I wasn't with him. I remember we talked about that, and I remember being like, okay, you know, momentarily inspired by that, being like, what can I accomplish at night? What I can that. I accomplish in these hours outside of it? But I I. I, part of me, real, most of me, realize that my answers aren't found on the internet. My answers aren't found, you know, Googling. People are like, well, wow, you're at work. You could be doing this. And I was like, I think, like, I've learned so much about myself with just, like, before and after work and meditating. In these past six months, I feel like I've grown so much, which has been awesome. But that midnight oil you know, I can't go, I can't go far. <laughs> Got to report back to work. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. a, that's an incredibly profound realization. I think it might be the most uh, relatable, significant thing you've said in the podcast. Mm-hmm. Because, bro, it's, you know, I'm on my phone so often. Bro. Because, well, that's where my, that's, to, where my really, that's where my that's answers are. That's where my answers are. Yeah. Like, I'm literally yeah, just yeah. a sponge for knowledge that I find on the internet. Mm-hmm. But you, you've made it very clear that traveling is like, uh, 
one of the biggest uh, Insp- inspira- yeah. Yeah, exploratory uh, factors that, that lead to growth in your life. And so it, it, I totally get what you're saying. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's 10 p.m. What, what's she going to do? Where am I going? What's she gonna, and and it's, I've tried- it's not just her. It's yeah. everyone with a job who gets home at 8, 9 p.m. Like where, where do you go if, yeah. if, if not the Internet? But she, you found it in you found it in horseback riding. You found it in cycling. I'm sure. Yeah, like these those... little things that I've I've you know curated as my hobbies have been a, a very much a lifesaver for me. You know, I've been doing archery and cycling, horseback riding. Um, I play around with like stunt stuff when I can get to workshops, which is super fun and has proceeded to injure me. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, but. You know, each of those things, those are all a hobby, you know, and I think that I can turn those maybe into like monetary devices. But, you know, I've, I've played around with the idea of like, well, let me, you know, put the camera on and see if this world is something that I can dive into. Yeah. But there's like a there's a, a there's a point of vanity oh my that God. I don't on. I don't so possess. And that maybe I'm discounting myself there, but there's something about it that that I can't. <laughs> it doesn't drive me to make these videos and, and sit there and stare at myself. Like, I, I mean, I put some makeup on today. That's awesome. But maybe that's what can be who Danny is and what that can like mm. offer people, which mm. I think could be a cool perspective. But otherwise there's like a, a vanity factor or self focus factor that I might be missing. For that I, I, I don't think that you're that far off with the, with that statement. I think, the fact of the matter is that we as a, a society have ended up in this very vain place where, you know, it, it's, I hate to knock on it because it's, it's what pays me, but yeah. you know, walking around with a camera following you, like, Hey, like every, everybody in the world, I have a story to tell, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, there's not as much, a uh, um, collaboration and finding out and, and people asking, yo, what's your story? Like, what's your mm-hmm. story that you have to tell? It's very, it's it, the, the, as a society, we continue to move into more and more of a me centric society. Yeah, and I thrive in a, that's great. Cause I, I thrive in a, like, let's do this together. Yeah. Let's ideate together. Something that we did. Have, have we mentioned the, well, we'll cut it out. <laughs> have we mentioned the scavenger hunt on, let's talk about it. Okay, cool. So, the, oh, that was so much fun. We had so much fun. Oh, that was so, awesome. Like, so things when I think about that, like a collaborative environment, which is why another reason I've realized that here it's it's the funniest thing because I can be very, very productive for you guys and successful in my role, but it's not a collaborative environment for me because my ideas that I offer only fit into specific things. It was like so scavenger. interesting. I saw you light up. Yeah. I saw you light up. <laughs> like, like, oh, I do this actually. I'll pitch an idea and kind of just like preach from the mountaintop yeah. and whoever I see in the house like activate sometimes it's Mike sometimes it's you yeah. sometimes it's Evan I'll be like let's yeah. go let's <laughs> yeah, go think, yeah. think, you yeah. a lot of the time yeah. music videos anything creative it's just like back and forth but and, there's not uh, often that it's been specifically I, I, me I, what, so what what about the just context Um, we'll, we'll get into it but uh, finally after maybe a year or year and a half I'm gonna be doing a ranch reveal tour soon my million and one dollar property that I got it is my uh prize possession next to my first edition PSA 10 Charizard. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to be doing a ranch tour. This property is absolutely, absolutely beautiful. It's where my dad resides. He's the groundskeeper. And we are going to be flying out 10 members of the Maverick Club to participate in a scavenger hunt for $50,000 worth of gold. Adventure. Adventure. So picture like the amazing race meets Survivor yeah. or something like that. Just a really cool scavenger hunt. And uh, I pitched the idea and you and I just started going back and forth on the uh, the uh, the, uh, the checkpoints mm-hmm. and, and the obstacles. Yeah. to get to the next one we sat there for it was the longest that me and you have ever i noted in my brain i said this is the longest me and logan have sat and collaboratively worked on an effort together yeah well, so what about that though uh, it piques just, your it's, interest it's just i like the, the adventure of it the those are the things i like like i live through the world in that way in like what's the next thing to pop to and like travel mm. or like it's in LA, I'm I'm the person who's trying a new coffee shop every day before work because that provides me something new to see. Mm. You know, it's something that, even though I mean, it's something I haven't done a scavenger hunt before. I don't I don't know, but it's like those type of things that I just saw my brain turn on, and I love I love those shows. I like I don't think I have the exact words for it, but it it. It was in the creative vein of <laughs> what turns my brain on. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was interesting. 
Yeah, I saw you. I saw you latch onto that, and I think uh, I think finally activating on that mm-hmm. is going to be like one, one, be of the, one of the one of the coolest things ever. We'll yeah. see if we can make it happen. I have a, I have a, yeah. I have a list of uh, superlative style questions okay. for you, which I think are fun. We don't do a lot of rapid fire on this show, but I've uh, come up with a short list of questions for you. Um, who who would you say has the best uh, style in the house? Clothing, clothing, dressing. Dave? Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. Dave. I agree with you completely. Yeah. Yeah. Who makes the biggest mess? <laughs> you. Honestly. How? T- it's okay. Logan makes a mess that kind of makes sense because of the way that he moves around the house and yep. he, he does things. Yours is like, I did something here and I just left it. What? Like what, for it's example? The, what's the glass table? It's all your mail. So it's your mail and the uh, stuff you get. You get yeah. more stuff in the mail than Logan I don't does. Read or open stuff any of it. Yeah. I'm, and so it's, yeah. it's just boxes and this and that and half opened and half done things that I feel like I'm like, keep it in your room. Danny, half open and half finished things is the story of my life. <laughs> the fact that the book ever came out is a fucking miracle and a testament to Riley to Riley J. Ford. Thank you, Riley, yeah. for getting that book done. Uh, who uh, sleeps the latest? Mm, I think Logan. I was going to say Evan. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Evan. oh my gosh. Yeah, wow. Evan, 100%. Sorry. Uh, who, would you be the, who would you be the most worried about stealing something? <laughs> you don't have to. Stealing something yeah. or just like taking an extra thing? Okay, yeah. Taking Dave. It, uh, yeah. Oh, not yeah. like not, nothing bad. Like right. it, it wouldn't like nothing that you would get been, in trouble he's been for. Taking my wellness pills. Yeah, but it'd just be like, well, no one's using this. <laughs> Who's the biggest simp? I, I still don't think I fully understood the definition of that. Who's word, the biggest? But... Uh, uh, um, who who would who would like for the girlfriend? Yeah. Is that the same as being whipped? Yes. Yeah. Honestly. I feel like it's Dave. With yes, okay, girlfriend. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. He just keeps answering yeah. the right questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, who has the highest and the lowest sperm count? Uh, I think Logan had the highest, and then lowest was you, but you screwed up the test. I, it, to probably, it probably was accurate. Uh, <laughs> just, out, just out of curiosity, this one should be an easy one. Uh, who uh, in the house still has the highest IQ? Still has the highest IQ? Yeah. Wasn't it Logan and Andre tied? Oh, were you in there too? No, no, it was, it it was, was him me. and Andre. Oh, God damn I'm it. sorry. I, well, I want to redo it. I, I, I want to redo it. I agree completely. Yeah. Let's, do, let's yeah. do another one. My favorite was that I had the lowest. No, you, well, <laughs> which, which doesn't make sense to me. I've always found this fascinating. It's how, because I think it has something to do with the same part of my brain that's used for like school. I was, I did not thrive in that environment. Like sitting there and taking a test online. Sure. If someone asked me those things in like a conversation or like we worked on it and I just I I hate it. We yeah. were very we were very close. By the way. what was I one twenty nine or one thirty one? You were one twenty seven. I was one twenty five. Or was it one? Okay, I, it doesn't matter. I had the same one as Rogan. So one twenty seven. None of that yeah. actually matters. Cause. It, you're right. Uh, <laughs> facts. Um, who uh, who eats the most? I think Logan because he's forced to eat a lot. But yeah. like if it was there, cho- if it was not forced upon them, it's you. <laughs> You try. You eat the most, but try to not eat the most. Logan would literally never eat if he didn't have to, and is forced food. So he- dude, we were eating crabs the other day last and just night. other seafood. Oh, that was just last night. Rabbit. No, I did. I, I blacked out. I looked to my right, and all of a sudden, you, your plate was full it's of crazy. just empty Massive. crustacean shells. And I said, "What? What happened, Mike?" And then he goes, "I don't know. Like, it looks like I beat you." And I looked at mine, and I was like, "What the?" And fuck? And I sat down like an Complete, hour after. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just I'm a psychopath when it comes to food. Uh, nicest person in the house. I feel like sorry, it's taking me a while for that one. It's it's only because everyone is everyone is like like heart. Who at their heart yeah. is happy. Or no, sorry, nice. Chef Eric. No, that doesn't can't count. That doesn't count. Um <laughs> definitely would win though. <laughs> I feel like you know what? I feel like it's <laughs> This is going to be funny because of what just happened earlier, but, like, Evan has something really pure and he good does. about, like, the inner part of yeah, his heart. he does. He does. He does. <laughs> he just yells a lot. Uh, last question. What, what was your favorite podcast ever here on uh, on the Impulsive set that you watch happen? 
yeah, these things I just black out yeah. of my brain. Well, you've been drinking a lot, Danny. <laughs> yeah. What if I talked at this level the entire time? That'd no. be crazy. No, 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 don't. Uh, no. Anybody, is anybody in the no. audience hearing me? Uh, no, it sounds like this other podcast. Though. Talk at this level. Um, best podcast. I don't know. One of those. One of the motivational ones, or one of like the. Oh, who who traveled? Colin O'Brady. He was cool. Yeah, he was. Oh, cool. yeah, that was a cool episode. He was cool. What are we looking at? My Instagram. Take a look. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just scrolling here, and uh, I, there's. We're, it's one of those ones like similar to Hayden. There's so much meat on the bone here. Like, yeah. I, uh, you shot your uncle. Oh, I did. <laughs> I did. You, sh- you shot your. <laughs> she's not the sweetheart you all think. She shot her uncle. And she killed the fucking cow. Yep, dropped a hay bale. Dropped the hay bale on a cow accidentally. By the way, not a big cow. A His big calf. He was a baby. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Let's preface with the fact that I'm from a town. Funny enough, I don't know if I've told you guys this. So the town I say I'm from is Batesville. Which is like where the grocery store is, but where I grew up is Ballstown. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Yeah. You're from Ballstown. Ballstown, yeah. Indiana? My dad my dad lives in Ballstown. It's like population hundred. You're telling me Greg Paul drove a bus into Ballstown. No, 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 Colorado. Oh, no. Yeah, sorry, God, Colorado. It's my bad. You're so right. So the point of bringing my that mistake. up is that I grew up in the middle of nowhere. Very much the story of like walked uphill both ways to school type of thing yeah with, like, snow. I, with, with snow. the snow i carried the water buckets all the way to the horse yeah, troughs yeah. you know Holy like grew shit. up in a very like we didn't have we like our house was a uh wood stove like at the ranch yep. you guys are like this is the only thing that heats i'm like this is how okay never mind yep. um <laughs> so with that said start shooting guns really early uh we were out of my uh uncle bob's property and my uncle which he sucks so it's fine uh, was like a little bit downrange. <laughs> well, Is this divorce, meant to be? Thing. Were you trying to shoot this? No, <laughs> at the time I didn't know he sucked. So it's fine. Okay, let's focus. So he was just a little bit downrange for me. You're obviously not allowed to do that. But I was just shooting at this little piece of wood. That's like from here to, you guys can't tell, but like the end of the podcast set. And it, it was a ricochet. It ricocheted off and it hit him in the calf and he just went down. And my dad was like, did you just shoot him? And I was like, I didn't know. How I would you know? Too. Yeah. Like, what do you have against calves? Yep. Agreed. <laughs> you hit your uncle oh, in the calf. You kill the calf. Okay. So that one was a mistake of, of not finishing something. <laughs> so you something. admit it. You, the first one wasn't a mistake. You're, <laughs> a, ca- you're a calfist. You're a calfist. So it's, it's things I learned growing up, living on the farm, working with my dad. You have to finish things to completion. Mm. It's what makes me good at the job I am now. You have to do things 100%. In this situation, me and my buddy were... He was driving a bobcat with a round bale, and okay. I was in the uh, petting zoo area with all the little baby animals. Yep. And he drops the hay bale over the fence, and it's kind of sitting a little cattywampus, you know, a little whopper job. Cattywampus yeah. whopper jump. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Classic. And he's like, is that good? And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know? And yeah. so we go inside, continue doing our farm chores. Yeah. We go back out, and it's fallen on this baby cat oh. and it suffocated it and oh. killed it so we had to go tell his grandfather who like runs the farm hey we just killed Ooh, one of your baby cows i thought you dropped the hay bale no you're only an accomplice to murder. i'm an accomplice that's to not murder. as bad yeah, yeah. that's not no, as but bad it's still like my eyes were on it imagine where it worked like we're doing something here and someone's eyes were on it to check to make sure something happened right how did you not see a cow no 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 it was a later thing. So the cow was just eating food and the hay bale, like the wind blew. And the hay bale was like, shoop. How small was this cow that it just got crushed? Tiny by? cow, huh? Tiny cow. Like well, this, those like, round bales are massive. Small enough to fit in your, uh, between your index your and your... No, like here. Oh, it's a box <laughs> cow. <laughs> yeah. Classic box. No, it's just, it just sucked <laughs> because it was like, cow. we, I went hunting, I grew up hunting, but like that's different than like a cute cow where we, like the grandfather was like, okay, well, this is your fault. You now have to go take care of this animal yeah. and take it out, you know. How'd you deal with that? Because to me, cows are just such cute animals. Yeah. And are. especially like a baby cow. I, like, you know. We, I grew up in a very different empathetic relationship with animals. Yeah. We, it was very much a kill, eat, hunt Farm farm For animals sure. are not your friends. Um, Did you guys ever use that as a slogan, like <laughs> like a sign hanging in the barn? Farm animals are not your friends. Do not trust them. Like I could see <laughs> you guys like holding no. signs outside like a Prop Twenty Six. No, but there's eliminate there's all farm animals. <laughs> yeah, no, we didn't do that. They they named uh, they named a pig after me, Danny, and they uh, they had a mini cow named uh, Big Mac. This farm that I grew up working on. Was that a hint? Was that like after they told you they don't like animals? They're like, this yeah, it's not about Danny. not liking animals. It's just growing up in an environment. Like, think like, like go back 
50, 100 years. Like, we're, we're like, next to Amish country. Yeah, so, like, yeah. we're living very, like, salt to the earth. Sure, you sure. Know? And it's all you know. When you yeah. when you grow up in that environment, it's hard. It's, it's hard, especially... Uh, excluding the advent of the internet, which at the time you're describing wasn't around. Yeah. Even if you, even well, if the it was like still out of my dad's house. Like I was talking to my stepmom the other day and she's like, I literally have had to go into town. The internet doesn't that's, work. Okay. So I was going to say, even yeah. if there was internet, who knows that you even got it where yeah. you were. Uh, it's, it is hard to, to see the other side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, your parents tell you one thing. It's, you're, uh, um, it's been really interesting. Easily influenced child. Yeah. 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 It's been interesting living out here. You know, it's such a, it's a polar opposite environment. I mean, you, you've also felt it. You're from maybe the suburbs of the country. Yeah. You're, you're more than me. Like you're really country. Yeah. I have like, I have a balance, but you, you're like, you're real country. Yeah. I can do both full fledged. Do you like this city? Do you like city? Uh, I do. I, I like the, uh, I like the fact that you can do anything and everything. There's no mm. excuse in, in mm. L.A. Because everywhere else you can say, well, if I was there, I could do it. Yep. If I was in this city, I could do this. But L.A., like, you can do. You can hike. You can snowboard. You can surf. You can do entertainment. You can Just be a lawyer. You can this. be a, a work in a hospital. You can literally, I mean, so I pick something. I should it. read the thing. I can, or I'll just summarize well, it. We, j- I just, ahead. I posted this story on my Instagram yeah. the other day about California and what makes it special because there's a mass exodus going on right now. Everyone's, a- everyone's leaving. Joe Rogan's leaving. Ben Shapiro's leaving. Definitely. So that's pretty. So that's, pre- about- so that's so that's pretty much everybody. And I wrote, I wrote this, <laughs> I wrote this, uh, this story, and and people are leaving for different reasons. Some are leaving because of the liberal values. Some are leaving because of homelessness and tax rates, but. California and Los Angeles offer something that not a lot of other places do, which is this calling to people. It, yeah. It's a calling that exists that says, hey, you have a dream and, and this city is here to help you facilitate that. It and is. it's 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 something that that unless you unless you feel that uh, innately within you, uh, it's not something that a lot of people understand. They think it's a place that you can just come and go. But I, I remember the first time I got here and this was in this what I wrote as well. Uh I got a feeling that I never got anywhere else in my entire life. I felt um, alive. I felt like being near the ocean, the palm trees, the hills. I was always so intrigued by the hills, by the rolling landscape. Bro, some boys from Brooklyn, my Brooklyn boys came yeah. to hang out. Yeah. We took them on the Super 73 rides, cruising around the streets, yep. up and down the hills. He's like, yo, this is crazy. I'm like, what do you mean? We're just riding bikes around the neighborhood, like, you know, boys. And they're like, no, dude, in Brooklyn, you can't do this. Right. There's there there's cops. There's not enough. Uh, there's too many people on the streets. Yep. There's no clear paths. The weather isn't nice. Like it's insane. Succinctly, I don't know if you were gonna say it, but you said it like this: California isn't a state; it's a state of mind. Yeah, that's what I, I, I thought. It was yeah. beautiful. I thought that's oh, a that's beautiful cool. yeah. little yeah. little summation. I love how I leave the one part I, out. I was hoping that you say that. Literally, <laughs> fucking alley oop to me. That was technically like the title of it of this. Yeah. But it's but it's, be, it's beautiful. That's yeah, yeah. honestly that's what it is. It's yeah. you you don't come here to pay. 52 plus percent taxes if you're in the top bra- bracket right. no you come you here come- because you are the outcast of every yep, town that you're from you're the exactly one, i'm it. the one person in my town i mean i could literally count them that you know left and that did something else and that is is and you could pinpoint me oddly enough you probably couldn't have guessed la because i was wearing sweatpants and basketball shorts and not like mm like honing into who I was, you know, but all these kids, were, no, no one's from here. Everyone is just, they felt not right for where they were. And so they came here and to it be, felt right. Yeah. And it's a, and I, I, it's a home for the weirdos, for the drifters, for the dreamers, mm-hmm. for the aspiring people, for the people who think they can build something great. Yeah. And, uh, there's a lot of, you know, it's, weirdly and coincidentally, the homeless problem we deal with is a result of, the people who came here and didn't make it. There's a lot of the people, people that came here and had that calling to come here and be the next actor, be the next brand builder and, and and were lost in the process, you know? And it's a, it's a strange place, but Jim Morrison always said it, said it the best in in one of the songs. I forget what song it was. Um, He said, the West is the best get here and we'll do the rest. Mm -hmm. And I don't talk about that a lot because I don't want people showing up at the Maverick house. Don't come. (laughs) We're not going to do anything for you except call the cops. But, but, but California very much is, is, you know, Get here, and you will be inspired by the West Coast. You will be yeah. you will be uh, a, a, a different person when you come here. It's a it's a great place. I think yeah, it's it's crazy too to see how many people are from like the Midwest also here or New York because right. they're these like hard. You know, who's here from Connecticut, Kansas? by the way? Oh, sorry, Connecticut. I know. <laughs> um, you know, and it's because we're all raised hardworking people. Yep. And then we're like, this isn't quite right. You good? 
Yeah, I'm just putting just, on socks. Right, just making sure. Yeah. Um, we are raised as hardworking people, and then we're like, but I don't want to be here, so we go to a city and work just as hard. Yo, that's but, the cheat code. That's yeah. The cheat, that's honestly the cheat Crazy, code. Crazy, right? Uh, yeah. I was going to ask you, I have two uh, final questions I want to ask you. Um, speaking of dreamers, you, you strike me very much so as a dreamer, mm-hmm. as a person who beat the odds. You beat the odds, Danny. You know, and you're just getting started. You, are, you beat the odds. So what advice do you have for the dreamers, for the small town folk who uh, maybe are afraid to take that leap or, you know, find and uh, write that next chapter of their life? It, it definitely starts with yourself. That's my biggest thing is it starts with you in school not being afraid to be, like, authentically yourself. That was something I was afraid to do. So I'm, I'm, I've still gotten to where I am with completely being terrified of who I was. And so like be that person in the hallway. I envy the people who would walk, like there's like the the weird kids who wore the funky hats or like the cool leggings or like whatever. I wouldn't, I didn't do that. I was like terrified of doing that. And I think it continues into who I am today, being a little scared of like branching out. And so- I always said the same thing. Yeah. I, I was, I was so afraid to like really lean into my interests. Yeah. I wanted to make YouTube videos and act. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, the theater kids. Like, I don't oh, know I was a theater kid, though, so I at least did that. <laughs> no, I thought, I, I thought, I don't know, I, I thought yeah. they wouldn't like well, me. I thought I guys, wouldn't fit in. Like, I envy yeah. the people who, like, embody who they are from day from mm-hmm. day one. Yeah, but some of them are scarred and then never went on to do what Sucks. they uh, what they Sucks. meant to do. And so so my advice to you is is really follow that twinge in your heart and yeah. like have it if you want, have a conversation with your parents or whoever is like holding you back from that and just be really, really honest with them. We're in the day and age where you can truly do or at least start what you want to do even young, mm. even as a kid, even on your computer, expressing yourself online, whatever it is in school, trying out different things. I did this um, this Zoom call with my college. My college invited me back. My the film and communications department they invited me back to be a panel, like a panelist yep. for the capstone yep. class. How cool is that, yeah. right? Awesome. And the biggest thing I realized was how uninterested they were. And like they were there. It's their capstone. They're about to graduate, and they're all like, "What do we do?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Awesome. Are you in student media?" And they're like, "No, none of them." Are you, have you seen the television department down in the bottom of this building or whatever? And yeah. the, like, no one answered yes. I said, okay, okay, get out there. Like, go try it and do it and experience what it's like because you could get in front of a camera and realize that you didn't want to do it, you know? But in college, I was part of the t- like TV production group. I was a radio host for three years. You know, I did all these things and I was like, this is fun. I like doing this. And so that's my advice to the dreamers what- is to keep dreaming. Summarize, would your advice to the dreamers be to get on the bus? Yeah. Like, I love that, Danny, by the way. I really <laughs> do love that. Get on the fucking bus. Yeah, get on and the bus. And it's another, it's another yeah. Morrison line. He said it in a lot of his songs, too, the, the magic uh, the, or the blue bus, which is hilarious. Oh my gosh. I'll, I'll play the song the time, for you. But... Oh, yeah. Also, we forgot to say it, we towed it out of here yesterday. Yeah, it's yeah, gone. It's, it's on to its, its next it's, life. Which is why the story that. mattered. We just forgot to yeah. completely. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, get on the bus for sure. If you're That's if you're watching this, listen to Danny. I think I said that at one point, and then I just forgot about it because I wanted to be like, I didn't get on the bus. Right. You gotta it's, be proud of what you do, guys. But it's also scary. It's also yeah. scary. And, it, and, and, and listen, like, it, just to tap on it and put my final cornerstone on or and cap, none of us are ever completely sure about anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Logan has a couple things that he's, he's definitive on, but, like, a lot of things that we approach, even at the level of success that we're at, feel not that great or you're a little anxious or you're a little scared to do it. I say this all the time. And, and to use your words, just get on the bus. Get on the bus. <laughs> try it. Honestly, the biggest the biggest thing that can happen is you can fail and you get on the next bus that comes through town. That's yeah. it. You got to try stuff. I come across so many of these like inspirational, uh, you know, 60 to 120 second videos on Instagram on my Explore page. And it's crazy how all the successful people are saying the same thing. <laughs> like, yo... They're saying the same exact thing, and, yeah. and, and both of you just said it. And it's like, how many times does this need to be hammered in the layman's head? Mm. I've been saying that recently a lot. I like it. Layman. The layman, the, av- yeah, the yeah, average yeah, man yeah, with yeah. the dream sure. uh, before, they, before, they, before they grasp it and run with it. Second thing I want to ask you, final question. Uh, in a world where, again, you're just surrounded by lunacy and chaos and testosterone 
and the sin. A lot of sin. We've gotten better. We didn't even get it. Bro, it's shit. it's too easy to sin. Could they have made it a little bit easier to not sin? It's, it's too easy. We're born in it. We all we're, we're born in it. It's yeah. how you maintain these uh, incredible moral values that you have is beyond me. Do you have any advice to young women? Mm. The one woman in this organization, and you've you've been able to like stay this strong, independent, creative woman. Pure. Pure. That is the word that she is. Danny is so pure. And in the age of TikTok and, you know, OnlyFans, twerking, OnlyFans, like, please, Danny, like, eh, preach to the young women out there. That's great. Um, I think part of it has to do with the, uh, what we kind of talked about earlier and like the, the vanity sake, you know, I'm not willing to sacrifice my, you know, those numbers or like the TikTok. you know, people will, will sacrifice a version of like a level of self-respect or they'll sacrifice of like, they are, they will, you know, fall into these, uh, I don't know, low hanging fruit type yeah, traps. Yeah. They'll grab those because, because they want to feel validated or they want to feel like with a lot of time, with guys, for example, people will latch on to whatever's next to them to feel validated, to feel seen. You know, that's something that I, I talk about. I want to feel seen, and a lot of people f find that in in men. Um, I think for me, I I've, I, I for the longest time have valued figuring myself out. That there hasn't been much room for. I want to put this into good words. We're asking you a tall order here. Yeah, no, and it's a great, it's a great question, but I think it's it's I'm so much more intrigued in looking inward and like playing around with this idea of like the best expression of myself, like in there that like the worldly things. I don't want to be like anyone else. I have I have actually like a a disgusting desire to do nothing like anyone else is doing, which has also been to a fault, you know? Like, I don't want to get on TikTok because everyone else is on TikTok. I don't want to put a feather in my hair because everyone else is putting a feather in their that. hair. I do remember. And so, yeah. Yeah. there we go. go. Different. Um, and so in in that, I don't want to have sex with a bunch of guys. Everyone else is doing that. <laughs> I want to I wanna see what I can figure out about myself. I want to, like, I don't want to go out and drink and party. I want to see the ends of the earth you know these are these things that are just like so much more interesting to me i don't want to get high i want to hike to the top of a mountain and like get feel that elated, high. Literally yeah, elevated, feel that yeah. elated feeling i'm curious but not enough to try out these things that i honestly like without judgment because i feel like everyone has their own path and i don't want to put that on anyone else because maybe they are doing they're exploring but in those veins but for me personally they just don't interest me yeah, yeah they don't get me going and so it's like for some people maybe it does and it just for me it doesn't i think you just need to really be honest with yourself at like what are you looking for and what really gets you going and don't go for the low-hanging fruit don't just like turn your butt around just because it's going to get more likes because those likes aren't going to actually make you more happy because at the end of the day you're going to lay in bed and just have more anxiety than i do just laying there thinking about your whatever. likes, yeah, yeah your like likes. whatever. It's just like go go inward and figure out what actually makes you happy. I haven't figured it out yet. I have no. I, I'm still learning. As I meditate there, I'm like, okay, we're gonna meditate. We're gonna find out what makes Danny happy. But it's definitely not going out and <sighs> showing your your butt off, doing drugs. You ne you never sacrificed uh, being great for being good. That's mm -hmm. what you never did. You separate. You have always had the skill, Danny, since I've met you to separate what is truly important in this life versus what is cool mm. and versus what is temporarily uh, fulfilling for people. Yeah. That is a skill that is very, very rare nowadays. You have, you have kept yourself away from all of the trends, all of the bullshit. And in the end it will, it will probably be more fulfilling for your life. And honestly, you're an incredible person. I've always thought, the highest, highest regard of you. You're an incredibly pure person, incredibly sweet girl, and you're going to go very far. Appreciate that. That was a fantastic episode. Uh, Danny Strobel, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. We love you, Danny. That was, um, that was really good.
That was really good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, Speaking of vanity, if you want to follow me on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> there you go, Danny. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, Danny L. Strobel. That's who I am. Feel free to follow me for me, for wanting to see what I do and wanting to see what I like because that's what I do. <laughs> Fantastic. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys once again for listening to this episode of Impulsive. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye.